Today's lesson is on friction. This will be a fairly short lesson because you will be doing a mini lab in class on it, and then we'll also have a couple of demos um, for it. So friction is a force that opposes motion between two objects that are in contact. The key thing is, is that it is a force. Let's see if I can get a... This is a short lesson on friction. We will be doing a mini lab on friction in class and we'll also be doing a couple of demonstrations with friction. Um, so this will be fairly quick. Friction is a force that opposes motion between two objects that are in contact. So it is a force. Okay. The cause of friction? Well, if you kind of look at this picture, you see these little hills and valleys, and this is zoomed in from this picture. So think about maybe the desk that you're sitting at, and it seems fairly smooth. But if you could zoom in with a microscope at the surface, you would see it's not smooth. It has lots of little hills and valleys. And you see in this picture, these hills and valleys, or the hills can get intermeshed with the valleys, and that's what causes friction. The amount of friction is going to depend on lots of things, including the force that pushes the objects together and also the roughness of the surfaces. And that should make sense too. Think of um, ice. You see the ice skate here. Think of the Zamboni machine that comes in between the periods in an, uh, on an ice rink. Okay? It spreads a thin layer of water that then freezes and creates a really smooth surface again, trying to get rid of those hills and valleys that were created by the ice skaters. Um, this picture we're going to do a demo that's similar to this in class. Um, basically kind of you can just you know read it if you want to or just um, kind of listen for a little bit. We have a big book sitting on the table and we have a lighter book sitting on the table. Assuming everything else is the same, which one do you think has a bigger force of friction? Okay, Probably the bigger one, right? Okay, More weight pushing those hills and valley together. Now what if I take this book and I turn it on edge, like in this picture? Will that be the same amount of friction? Different friction? Okay, like I said, we'll do a demo with this class. There are two main types of friction, static and kinetic, and then kinetic has two subtypes that we'll talk about. First, static though. Static friction is just friction on an object that is not moving. Okay, you think of the word static, okay, it's not moving. In static friction, the static friction force balances the input force. Okay, so these are balanced forces, so it is not moving. There is no change in motion. If you remember our, our last lesson, okay, with balanced forces. Once an object starts moving, static friction is gone and replaced by kinetic friction and you'll be seeing this in the lab, um, but we can talk about some examples, and kind of the example at the bottom of the page here about pushing a piano. You kind of think about that. You have a really heavy piano, and you start pushing, pushing, pushing. You're pushing with all your might. It's not moving. And then finally, you've overcome the friction. It starts to move. Okay, that maximum force that it takes to get the piano moving, that's the static friction force. Kinetic friction is friction between two moving surfaces. Okay, so the surfaces have to be moving for kinetic friction. And there are two main types, sliding kinetic friction and rolling kinetic friction. And sliding should make sense if you're sliding an object like is happening in this picture. Those hills and valleys are sliding against each other as you pull. And then rolling friction you can see with rolling. And again, in the lab, you're going to be comparing these, and on your note sheet, you're going to write down um, the comparison after um, you've done the lab. Okay, you can write that comparison down um, after you've done the lab. Um, again, you can think of the piano example that we already talked about, or if you're a football player, maybe think of the football sled. Okay, try pushing the football sled, and then once you get that football sled moving, is it easier? Does it get easier the faster you go? Okay, you can think about um, those kinds of things, um, and then compare them on your note sheet. But again, we're going to be doing a lab 
on that um, in class. Um, this picture is pretty good showing with her static friction. Remember again, static friction is friction that when it's not moving. So you see the block sitting on the table. It says there is no friction between the block and the table when no force is applied to the block. Okay, you need to apply that force. In the B picture, you apply, you apply a little bit of force. Static friction is going to push back equally, balanced forces. If you apply enough force that you start the object sliding, then you overcome the static and you're into the kinetic friction. And again, we're going to talk about which one's bigger and everything like that, and you're going to um, learn about that when you do your lab. Okay, so the last thing, we're just going to do some examples. So give an example where friction is good, and you can write down um, an example on your sheet. Um, I'll give you one, kind of just start you off. Um, you look at the picture here. Okay, He's creating fire by rubbing the two sticks together. Okay, um, One of the main kind of results of friction is heat. Uh, it's good in this case because he wanted to start the fire, but usually the heat from friction is not good. And think of that um, when you're coming up with your examples for some of the other ones down here. Think about if it's, if it's making heat, then you're going to have some friction. Um, an example when friction is bad. Okay, maybe you're, again, playing football or soccer and you get tackled on the turf. And you get turf burn. Okay, when you rubbed against that turf, which had the hills and valleys, and that rough surface, and it created heat and it burned your skin. Okay, and again, you can think of other examples to write down. How can friction be increased? Okay, one of the ways would certainly be making the surface rougher, okay, or more rough. Um, like putting sand onto an icy sidewalk. Okay, that's increasing friction. Okay, and again, you can come up with more examples that you can write down. How can friction be decreased? Um, using oil as a lubricant in a car engine is a good example. The oil will fill in the valleys um, so that the other metal parts will rub against more smoothly and create less heat. Okay. Um, water on the chapel floor. The water fills in those valleys. So when you step on the chapel floor and it's wet and you go sliding. Okay, so another example. All right, you can come up with some more examples. And that's it's for friction. So friction is a force that opposes motion between two objects.